Hello and welcome to this very exciting project using Bottle, a very fast and lightweight Python micro web framework. I have three episodes and tutorials on Bottle and how to use it on my channel. You can refer to them if you're new to Bottle. Now we are going to make this cocktail finder and how it works is if I look for an item like a cocktail, type in something like Moito press and go and I have the name if it's alcoholic or not instructions and an image if I use something which doesn't exist there something like this for example press and go oops page not found try something else I can click on back to search and here I am where do I get the information? I get the information from the cocktail database, the cocktaildb.com. You can go to the API and you can see a list of their endpoints. So if I go to this, for example, this is what I get, JSON, kind of almost like a Python dictionary. You can see everything inside this key value pair key drinks and value is a list and you can see inside that list we have several other dictionaries so we can look for this information inside this URL the user can change this margarita to mojito or whatever else and they get this information we display it on a page using bottle. If you like this channel, by the way, that helps a lot. So just press the like button if you can. Appreciate it. Now I'm going to use PyCharm as my IDE. I have this blank page and folder. I'm inside my virtual environment here. I'm going to type in pip install bottle. To install it it's gonna take a couple of seconds I'm also gonna pip install requests because we are going to send requests to get response from cocktail database now we can go up there inside our main and import what you want from bottle so what I want from bottle is to import run function and route Let's also import requests and JSON. So we're going to import requests to send a request to the URL you saw. And we also use JSON to process that information. Now, down below, I'm going to run my application by run function. I have tutorials on this, so please watch them if you don't know what that is. And I'm going to set the debug to true and that is only in development mode so that I get more detailed error messages if I get any. I also get set the reloader to true and that helps because I, would, I wouldn't need to stop the server and run it again every time that I change, make some changes in my code base. Now I'm going to set it down there. And up there, I'm going to specify a route that the user can take. For example, they go to forward slash, that is home page or root directory. So what happens they, if they go there, some function that I'm just going to call home should return something and they will see this. What they will see is, let's say, hello world for now. Let's save this, run our app here. The server has started up and this local host with this port 8080 has been provided. I can click on it or I can simply go to this address here. Let's just put it there, not like this, right here. Okay, so now I have hello world here. What I can do now 
is to change this hello world to a template. I have talked about templates before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import template from bottle. And instead of that, hello world, I'm going to return a template. Let's just call that template home. So bottle looks for this template inside a views folder. So let's create the views folder. And inside that views folder, let's create a file, which is called home, because this is the name of the template with a TPL extension, which is template for bottle. PyCharm doesn't recognize it. So I'm going to override it to HTML. And now I can double click on it. And here I can use HTML code here. Exclamation mark tab provides a boilerplate for me. Now, right there, I can have some HTML code like H1. Here is the cocktail. And down here, let's have some H2, for example, like name is equal to something that we will provide later. Let's have another or H3, maybe alcoholic and whatever it is will be given by our API. And the last one, or actually maybe we need two more. So P tag instructions, again, will provide it later. And the last one is an image. Let's just have image here as a placeholder. I'm gonna save it. And now if I go to my web page and refresh, you see I have this template at this address. Great. So what I want to do is I would want to have a form as well so that the user will input what they want to look for. So I would create a search template here as well. I'm going to call it search and dot TPL would be extension override it to HTML and now we can create our code here form here again a boilerplate and now form we need to have a form it should after process it should go to this root directory and we should specify also a method for processing the data, which is a get request for now. And inside that, let's have a input. And that input field is going to be first a text. Let's put the name of it to, for example, search. We don't need an ID. This search is very important because this is an identifier for our field. Whatever the user inputs here will be identified using this name search. So we'll know where to look for what the user inputs. Let's have another field input called submit type. The value of it can be something like go. And that is what you will see on the button. And let's give it a name as well. Just go. So we can identify whenever the user clicks on go by referring to the name. That is our form. Let's go back to our main.py. And now instead of returning home, right above uh, below home, we can use the request and JSON. How? We can go to the, uh, the endpoint here. I'm going to copy this URL because we are going to send a request to this and get a response back and display the information here. So I'm going to save that URL inside a well URL. And now that I've done that, I can specify a response. It's just a variable. And we are going to use the request library that we imported to get the URL that we just saved. Now this request 
is just a code like 200 or 404 or something like that. We don't need that part, we need the JSON part. So I would say res.json and now we have access. So res would be this. This is what we have as res. We are interested in the drinks key and inside the drinks key we need the first index, index zero. That's how we get it. So we would say drinks is equal to res that we got. What is the name of the key? Drinks. Which one? Index zero, the first list, the first item in the list. And now we have access to this up to this point here. So this is now our drinks. We can get access to the name by using this key str drink. I'll call here, instructions here, and image here. So that's what we do. Now we need to make our template. We need to allow it to access these drinks. So what we do right here inside template function, we give it another argument. Could be whatever, like d equals drinks. And what it means is that inside my template home, I have access to a variable called d, which represents this information, this value. I can also call it the same name as drinks. So why not? Now I can use drinks variable inside my template. It has access to it now. So I will go to my home template. And instead of these blanks, I'm going to use double curly braces. And I have explained in the past videos that double curly braces we use for using Python expressions here. So for example, if I put something like two plus 10, two plus 10, and let's just have another two plus 10 outside these curly braces. Now let's go back to our document, a refresh. You see we have 12 and we have two plus 10. You see the difference. So it means what is inside and these curly double curly braces evaluates as a Python expression. So now we have access to drinks here. What I'm going to look for is drinks and a specific key in that drinks. I'm going to copy this and paste it all here. But what is the key for name, alcoholic, instructions, and for an image? So for an image, let's have an image. And instead of source, we put in the in the URL. Okay, now let's go back and see what is the name of these things. So for the name of the drink, margarita, for example, we have str a drink. I'm going to put it here instead of name, drinks. The key is str drink. Now for alcoholic or not, we have here str alcoholic. So I'm going to put it here. For instructions, we have instructions here. These are in English. So let's put it here. And for the image down below, we have this URL that is going to be where our source is. So now we have access to the name of the drink. If it's alcoholic, the instructions and the image. I'm going to save this control S and go back to my document a refresh and you see we have the name alcoholic um, instructions and an image. Great. The styling is not good though and that should change later. But for now it's good. So now we have everything in place here. The only thing is we don't have the search yet. 
So we have specified margarita ourselves here. We need to replace it with what user enters. So what it can do, we should see what the user enters inside this search name, this input field. And when the user clicks on go, we should do these operations. All this should only happen when the user has clicked on go. How do we access that? So we need a if statement. We can say if request, and we don't have access to this request for bottle. That's why we need to import it right above from bottle, import request as well. So the request.get, if it's go and go, if the re get request is go, is true. That is, if someone has clicked on this name go, right? That is why we gave it a name. Then we are going to look for search. If that is a request, then let's say, I don't know, name, for example, the name of the cocktail is going to be request dot get dot and search. What is search? Search is what we get from the user in this field. And let's just strip it. That is, let's get rid of the white spaces before and after it, if there is any. And now we have access to what the user enters. Let's indent everything so that it's under this. So instead of Margarita now, we should have this name. How can we include it here? By using an F string. F. And it's a Margarita inside curly braces, one pair, we should put our variable name. Now name is coming from what the user puts and it will be inserted at the end of this URL and we'll get access to all that. So what happens is right here, instead of Margarita, whatever the user enters, like Mojito, for example, will be inserted and you can see we have Mojito and all the information regarding Mojito. So that should happen when the user clicks on go in the form but we don't have the form in the beginning so that is why we say else that is if the user has not clicked on go yet return our search template the search template that we just created here this form but when the user clicks on it return all this whatever the user has put inside the input field. Now I've saved it and let's go back and let's see if I refresh, you see the word search. Now let's just see what is wrong. So I'm going to back now because, well, obviously return <laughs> template search do not return the word search but template search now let's save this and go back again and refresh and you can see i have this form i can put in one of these like mojito for example press go and look we have mojito if something else uh, margarita even if i put in like marg or mar for example press go I get something which starts with Mar, and that is Martini for now. You see? And this is the information in our GET request. It's visible in the URL. This is the search, and this is the value of our submit button, go. So that is what happens. Now, what if the user goes to a page that does not exist, like this? We get this terrible error. We should not do that. We should make sure that when the user gets a, and there's an error, another page is rendered. So we are going to import error from bottle. And down below, let's take care of those errors. Let's create a decorator called error. It's for general errors, like 500, 403, whatever. And let's create another 
decorator for specifically error 404 and we can put them together right on top of each other and both will um, be bound to this function of I'm just going to call it error and pass in the argument error and this means I can return now a template that I'm going to specify and let's just call it error page so whenever there's an error or error 404 that is a page not found return this page this template which we have not created yet and I'm going to create it now dot tpl is a template let's override the file type to HTML and now I'm going to specify here another HTML boilerplate an h1 which says oops page not found and an a tag which goes to forward slash the root directory back to search and that's it so if there's an error this template will be returned now let's go back and see what happens if i refresh and let's just go something like this one oops page not found back to research back to search perfect now this worked as well now the only issue is we can get rid of all these redundant because all of them uh, have the same repeated code in the heading we can put all this code which has been repeated all over inside a file called base I have explained this in another video as well so I'm going to call base.tpl and overwrite it again to HTML now I have this base code and I'm going to put everything which is repeated in all pages which is common in this base so I'm going to put it here and also the end is the same for all so I'm going to get rid of the first and last parts of all these and only keep the specific content which is for those pages now inside this body I'm going to specify where to put everything else whatever is not base put it here I can also put a footer here myself which is will be shared by all and the footer is going to have access to well actually will have something like let's say a p tag which says pythonology and for the date i'm going to use python to update the year so i'm going to import and to import or to use python expressions you can use a percentage sign and we will import date time here and right there inside double curly braces to have that Python expression I can say date time dot date time dot now and here dot year so this gives me the current year I don't need to specifically mention 2022 because in a couple of days it will be 2023 and this automatically changes things now we are going to let our templates know about this how right on top again percentage sign this is Python we would use this function rebase and we specifically mention where our base code is what, what is the name of that so base.tpl is going to be the name of our code base our base so this is what they're going to draw on I'm going to save all this as well. Perfect. Now, if I go back, let's see if something changes. So if I refresh, I see this footer, which should be styled anyways. But let's have Mojito go and look down below. We have Pythonology 2022. Awesome. So you have everything you need to know. And in the last video, I talked about static files and CSS files. So you can add the CSS styling as you wish by using static files. I hope you liked the video. 
If you did, please leave a like or a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching 